Hi everyone, my name is Karis and welcome back to my corner of the internet where I talk about books and other things that I enjoy. In today's video I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in January. There are seven of them, which is the most amount of books I've read in a single month in a very, very, very long time. So I'm really glad to have started 2021 off on such a good note in terms of reading and I'm hoping that this can continue throughout the year. So I'm just going to talk about the books in the order that I read them. Actually to give a couple of stats before I begin, this month I read two middle grade books, two or three YA books because I'm not sure about one of them. I would categorise it as adult but Goodreads etc categorises it as YA and then two or three adult books. First book that I finished this month was Mistletoe and Murder by Robin Stevens. This is book five in the Murder Most Unladylike series, which is a series following schoolgirl detectives Daisy and Hazel through a variety of murder mystery cases. As this is the fifth one in the series, this is obviously their fifth murder mystery. And this followed them to Cambridge where they went to stay with Daisy's brother and something went down in their brother's college. This one was also really nice because there was a character who I'm not gonna say in case people would cut it as a spoiler but a character that they meet in the third book crops up in this book as well as you can tell by the cover and the title this is a Christmas book but I read it really early in January like I started it on the first and read it over those first few days of the year I really wanted to get around to this before the festive season was officially over because I do want to read on with the series this year I am taking a little bit of a break at the moment from it because I've got so many other things that I want to prioritize but I know that I'm not going to want to wait until next Christmas to carry on with the series and although I know I could miss this and then go back to it next year I just want to read them all in order so I thought that I would get around to it now. I gave this one a four out of five stars. It's one of my favourite ones in the series I think. I loved seeing Cambridge, I loved the Christmas vibes that were in this book and I've said it a lot of times on my channel before but if you're looking for a really fun detective based murder mystery story then I would definitely recommend checking out this series. The next book that I finished in January was Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This was actually a reread for me according to Goodreads I read it at the end of 2017 and I do know that I've read it before but I could not remember a single thing about this book going into it and now that I've reread it I'm like how could I forget this because it was such a beautiful story I loved this one so much I decided to pick this one up because of Shah from Thoroughly Enjoyed Books's book club called Books About Bipolar and this was the January read. I'll leave a link to Shah's live show for this in the description if you want to check out the discussion that she had surrounding this book. It happened yesterday and I stupidly went out on my daily walk at the exact same time that it was on so I still need to catch up on it but I've heard from other people that it was a really great discussion and I can't wait to hear what everyone else thought about this book. So the main character in this book is a girl called Suzette who has been at boarding school in New England and she's coming back for the holidays to stay with her family in LA. As the book goes on you learn about why she went away to begin with and you learn that Lionel who she calls Lion and he calls her little hence the title, her brother has recently been given a diagnosis of bipolar disorder type 2. The story then really centres around Lionel's coming to terms with his diagnosis, how he deals with it. But from Suzette's point of view, so also looking at how she and other members of her family are there for Lionel and how they also deal with the situation. There were just so many different intersectional identities that were featured, which is just so refreshing. The main character in this book is black, bisexual and Jewish. And it's something that's brought into the story, this discussion around all aspects of her identity. And it was all just done so well. So if you're looking for a really well written story that is emotional because it was in places but also really great in terms of diversity and really doesn't ignore topics, it really has important conversations then this is the one for you. The next book that I read this month was The Way Past Winter by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. There's a bit of a wintry theme that's going to be coming for the next three books that I read. This follows a main character called Mila who wakes up one morning to discover that her brother has disappeared and not only her brother but also all the men and boys from the village as well with the exception of one, a mage called Rune. And then it follows Mila and Rune as they go on this journey to the frozen north I'm not actually sure where this book is set, you know, I assume it's somewhere in Scandinavia, but I'm not sure if there's actually a country 
that's referred to it all but the blurb describes it as the furthest corner of the frozen north that's where they travel to on a quest to find all the men and bring them back i picked this one up because i really loved the mercies by kieran millward hargrave which was also set in scandinavia that one was set in norway obviously the two stories are very different that one is an adult book this is a middle grade that was more historical this is fantasy i thought that maybe there would still be some similarities in the way that the story was told and because i loved the writing style in that one i would really enjoy this one and what i will say is the writing style i really enjoy it i really do like the way that kieran writes and i do want to try some of her other books in the future but there was just something about this book that i just didn't connect with i don't know if it's because i read this quite quickly i just feel like a lot of it went over my head and there was a big section in the middle where i don't really remember what went on like i remember the beginning and i remember the resolution but some stuff in the middle I couldn't tell you and I don't think I could tell you when I'd finished reading it either. It is a children's book so obviously it's going to be shorter but I just feel like maybe there could have been a bit more explanation as to some of the things and some of the characters and their motivations and just why things were happening. Overall I gave it a three stars because I still did enjoy it. There were just some things missing for me as I've said and I do want to read more of Kieran's books in the future but I think I would prioritise any future adult books that she does or any more contemporary stories. The next book that I finished was This Winter by Alice Oseman, another wintry themed read. This book was sent to me for Christmas by Shannon from 155 Books, which was just so lovely. Thank you so much once again, Shannon. Now this book is actually centred around a Christmas day and I think if I'd have known that going in, I mean, I could have literally told that from reading the blurb properly, I probably would have prioritised reading it like on Christmas Day itself or Boxing Day or just on those few days between Christmas and New Year because I think it would have just been even more like special reading it then. But nonetheless, this was still a really enjoyable read because I love everything that Alice Oseman writes. It's set at Christmas, as I said, and it follows Tori, who is the main character in Alice's debut novel, Solitaire, and then Nick and Charlie from the Heartstopper series because Charlie is Tori's brother. The book begins in Tori and Charlie's household on Christmas day, and it just follows the events of the day, really them getting up, the family coming round. A big theme of this is Charlie having to see his family for the first time since coming out and also since having been in hospital or a treatment centre, I'm not entirely sure, but he's been somewhere because of his eating disorder, which is something that you see hints of in the third volume of the Heartstopper series. So this is set after that but before the events of Solitaire I think. Got through this in like 45 minutes I would say and it was just such a heartwarming story. I love Nick and Charlie, they're such great characters. I can't wait for the rest of the Heartstopper graphic novels to come out and I'm looking forward to reading Nick and Charlie which is the other little novella that Alice has written. The artwork in this is also just super lovely. It was nice to see illustrations because obviously that's such a big part of the Heartstopper series and overall I gave this a four stars. The next book I promise is the final one that has winter in the title um, and it is the only word of the title. It is Winter by Ali Smith. I decided to pick this one up because as you might know I'm trying to really branch out my reading tastes and I'd heard really good things about the seasonal quartet so I thought why not read one every season, do the whole quartet this year? And as I had thought that I wanted to do this in winter, I thought I would start with winter. Now this is actually the second one that was published. Autumn was the first one. I don't know if it matters. I took it that I could read them as standalones and come back to autumn as the last one. So this is the second one, but it's the first one that I've read. To be honest, I still don't really know how I feel about it and I don't really know how to explain it. It basically follows four people in a house in Cornwall. There is a woman called Sophia and her son called Art who is in his 20s I think. Then there's a girl called Lux who he basically convinces to come to Cornwall with him to see to stay with his mom to pretend to be his girlfriend who he's fallen out with or broken up with. And then a woman called Iris who is Sophia's sister and they're very estranged. There's a big history there. So the one thing that I did like about this book is I really enjoyed seeing some present and topical things being brought into the story. So this was written in I think 2018. So it's obviously not 
things that have happened since then. So a big theme in this one is environmentalism, which is obviously very current and very important. There's mentions of Brexit in here and mentions of Donald Trump. And I did really like seeing the way that the modern world was depicted in this book and the different opinions that some of the characters had and their conversations about it. I found that really interesting. I also liked the use of language in some places, like there were a few things that I was like, oh, that's really clever. There was one quote in particular that I really enjoyed, so I'm gonna just get my little quotes book and share that with you. Sorry if there's a slight angle change, I knocked the camera, but the quote that I really liked from this book is, she is pristine, correct, a girl clearly headed for head girl, and head office, then head of her own business, ahead of the pack, at a time when girls aren't meant to be ahead, or a head of anything. That was my favourite quote, and I wrote it down because I was like, I love this, I'm gonna love this book. That was on page 23, I would say after that, um, I didn't love it as much as I thought I was gonna. I gave it a two and a half stars overall, so that for me is like an okay, rating like it was okay there were bits like that that i did really enjoy and i was like oh yeah that's so clever but i don't think the rest of it was strong enough in my opinion to make me love it and make me want to like rate it any higher i just think that the writing style isn't really massively for me i'm not necessarily a person who has to read plot driven books like the next book that i'm about to talk about i loved and that was very character based and character driven i feel like even in stories that are very character driven there has to be something like a goal or an aim or just something that you know the story is heading towards and i felt like in this i just didn't know where it was going and i'm not really sure now that i could tell you where it went so yeah i just don't know how to talk about it really because i feel like i understand why some people love it and if you like very literary stuff then I would recommend checking it out. You probably already have if you like literary stuff because Ali Smith is like the literary god, I think. But not really for me. I I'm not sure about carrying on with the quartet, to be honest, they won't be a priority. The next book that I read this month was The Orange Girl by Yerstein Gerda. I'm not gonna talk about this too much here because I've got a whole vlog of myself reading it. I'm doing a series on my channel where I read books from all around the world, beginning with books from the countries that I was meant to visit in 2020. This was the second video that I did for this series. This book is Norwegian. It's set in Oslo and that's where I was meant to be going and visiting last year. So if you want to hear my full thoughts on this, I would go and watch that video where I do some Norwegian baking as well. It's very chaotic. This book was recommended to me by my friend Louise, who I was going to go and stay with in Oslo. And I said in my blog, I'm so glad that she recommended it because I loved this. I gave it five stars. So this is the one that I wasn't sure whether it was YA or adult because the central character is a boy who's 15. But it doesn't follow his life and the themes of it are like family, identity, life in general. As I said, this book follows a 15 year old boy. His dad died when he was around three, three and a half. And when he's 15, he comes home one day to find that his grandparents have found this letter that his father had written to him. He begins reading this letter and in the story, the father begins to tell him the story of who he calls the orange girl, who's a girl who he literally bumped into on a tram. She was carrying like a massive bag of oranges. He bumped into her, they went everywhere. Since that moment, he can't really stop thinking about her and he becomes adamant that he's gonna find her, he's going to talk to her and it follows the father's story and the orange girl's story from there but it also follows the son reading this letter where the father is telling him the story and the father wrote the story as he knew that he was dying so there's that element to it as well. So it's formatted largely as this letter but there are sections where the son interjects with his thoughts and comments or direct answers to some of his father's questions. So yeah that's the basic premise. As I said I've got a whole vlog but I loved this. Five stars and I really want to check out more of Gerda's work in the future. And the final book that I just managed to finish this month was We Are All Birds of Uganda by Hafsa Zayan. If you watched my reading every morning video, then you will have seen me talking about this for basically all of that week that I was vlogging that, but I didn't really go into too much detail about my thoughts on the book. I ended up really enjoying this one. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars, and I think it's such an important book, and I think it's gonna be one that's 
quite popular and does quite well this year. That's just my prediction. Basically this book follows two generations of a family. So the first perspective that you read is the perspective of Samir who is a 26 year old living in London. He has a family in Leicester. His family are originally from India but then they moved to Uganda in his grandfather's generation. So his parents are born to an Indian family in Uganda. Him and his sister were born in England. Samir's like a corporate lawyer in London and he's got this very well paid, very well respected job. He's been offered a promotion. He's working all these really long hours. But then a tragedy involving his best friend calls him back to Leicester to stay with his family. And then the other perspective that you get is the perspective of Samir's grandfather. That perspective begins in a series of letters addressed to his grandfather's first wife, his first love, who you know right from the beginning has already died as he's writing these letters and he's since remarried. And it just charts his experience of being Asian and living in Uganda. Idi Amin, when he came into power in Uganda, basically told all the Asian people that were living there and there were a lot, like big communities, that they had to leave. Those that had British citizenship were able to come to the UK. Those that didn't have British citizenship may have ended up in different countries in Europe. I thought this book did a really good job of portraying the history of Uganda from an Asian person's perspective. I vaguely knew a little bit about that history but I had never really stopped to think about what it would have been like during that time just being told like you have to leave your home, you're not allowed to take more than I think the book said it was like a thousand dollars or pounds out of the country like you can't take anything with you you can't leave any of your belongings to anyone people were being attacked like it's just so horrible to realize the extent of what people had to go through and realizing that it wasn't even that long ago like it's in my parents lifetime that just was very powerful for me I also thought the way that this book just dealt with the complex multifaceted layers of identity was so well done. You see Samir sort of struggling with his identity as a Muslim in London. There's a lot of like casual everyday racism that he experiences from people in his work. You know, people making comments that they don't mean anything, but they're actually racist. Ultimately in this book, he does go to Uganda and then there's different things that come into play in terms of his identity. There were just so many different layers to this story that they all came together really well, but then ultimately there wasn't really resolutions for all of the layers because that's life. I loved the sections that were set in Uganda in the present day in particular. The way that the author created the image of the country, the descriptions were just Oh, beautiful and the descriptions of food in particular let me tell you I was hungry several times reading this book they were just so good and the reason why I didn't give it a full five stars is because the beginning I found quite difficult to get into because the grandfather's sections are told in letters it's sort of told as if you already know what's happening because he's addressing it to someone who would already know what was happening. So I found it a little bit slow to get into and for me to figure out who all the different characters were, especially in those sections. But when I got into it, I devoured it. And I would just highly recommend that everyone reads this book because I think it's such an important story. So those were all of the books that I read in January. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or if they're on your TBR. I would love to hear your thoughts on them or just leave me an emoji of your choice to let me know that you watched the video. Other than that though, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're all keeping safe and staying well and I will see you again next time. Bye.